So safety regulations, do we all know in this room, and I hope we do after Sally's talk and previous seminars, that we have to have a gas safety certificate, an electrical safety certificate, smoke alarms on every floor of the property, and carbon monoxide alarm in the rooms that have solid fuel facilities to burn, not necessarily solid fuel. And you also have to make sure that your furniture complies with fire and furnishings regulations. These are very straightforward safety regulations and today in more detail I'm going to talk about the gas safety. I don't think it's on my slides today but I will make a small section to talk to you about EPCs because this is becoming a challenge now. When we spoke to you before it was in March and the legislation wasn't changing until the 1st of April. The legislation is now in and I personally within our department are, we are experiencing issues by where tenancies are falling foul of the E rating. So we'll talk about that in more detail shortly. Okay, so the gas safety installation and use regulations, 96 to 98. So again, these haven't been updated for years. There is talk about these being updated. There is talk in the industry of perhaps having to have um, a gas safety certificate on change of tenancy. For me, it actually makes sense. 12 months is a long time to check that gas is not leaking. Um, so, at the moment, as it stands, what we have to do is ensure that we carry out a gas check every single year. And every single year, it's due annually. And so many landlords let that expire and overlap. For that period in time, you are in breach. You are non-compliant and you are actually committing a criminal offence. The gas safety regulations, it's a criminal offence for non-compliance. So please, guys, bear in mind that when your gas check is due for expiring where possible, you are booking it in with enough time to have no gap. Now, I know tenants go on holiday and sometimes access issues can be a problem. If that is the case, make sure you're documenting it and it is being done at the earliest opportunity so that they allow you the access. You have to keep the records for two years, but actually we have to keep lettings record for six years. So I'd recommend that you keep lettings files and all of their contents within, which includes the gas cert, for at least six years. You have to give to the tenant before they move in. This is really important. So let's say that you get a gas cert done today. You know it was done this morning. The gas engineer said it's passed and you're about to give me the keys without that gas certificate being in your hand. You're in breach of the regulations and you will not be able to serve notice or there may be problems with you serving notice on that tenant if the need requires. <coughs> Now, there has been a very recent case about this in the courts, and the landlord lost because he couldn't provide evidence that he provided the certificate prior, Hello. prior to the start of tenancy. He could only prove that he gave it after the start of tenancy, even though the certificate was dated prior to the start of tenancy. Does that make sense? So it's very, very important that you're proving that the tenants have had copies of the gas certificate and the dates match. Once you've renewed a gas certificate, you have to provide that to all tenants. And this is another thing to bear in mind. If you're renting to more than one person, you should be given more than one gas certificate. Sounds stupid, but it needs to be more than one. Each tenant is within their right to have a gas safety certificate. So when renting HMOs, again, I don't think there's many landlords in here, but when you are renting HMOs, the regulations... Um, make sure that we have to display it within the house. That within itself is not sufficient service. It still has to be given to each individual tenant and displayed in the property. And it has to be given to them within 28 days of the renewal. Okay, so 28 days after the um, certificate ends. The only time that a landlord can opt out of their gas um, safety obligations is if you have done a tenancy for more than seven years. I don't mean if your tenant's been in there for seven years and you've renewed every 12 months. What I mean is you have a seven and a half year lease with a tenant and they can therefore, you can legally then pass on your repairing obligations, including the gas safety. Other than that, you cannot contract out of it. Also bear in mind excluded appliances. If you move a tenant into a property and they wish to install a gas cooker, that is not your responsibility to maintain throughout the tenancy. It is the tenancy's responsibility to ensure that they've 
um, had a gas safe engineer install it and it is their responsibility to maintain that appliance throughout the duration of the contract. If you've already got your gas engineer doing a gas certificate yearly anyway for the bits that are your obligation, I probably would include the appliance just so that there's no grey area if ever there's an instance and there was a problem with that appliance. I don't think any of us in here wants a gas explosion and to, to kill our tenants. Um, be wary of room sealed appliances in bedrooms and bathrooms. Um, and also be wary of this um, when carrying out your inspections. <coughs> so when visiting properties, if you've got beds in living rooms with gas um, appliances, you've got problems there. They shouldn't be used for um, bedroom purposes. You might want to consider getting a carbon monoxide detector or um, speaking with your tenants and finding out why they're using the lounge as a, a bedroom. Some reasons are genuine. Um, it's just that the room might be bigger or it suits the purpose better because they might have a disability. Um, but if you are using any form of lounge that have got gas appliances in, any room that's being used to sleep in um, that has gas appliances in, I would most definitely get a carbon monoxide detector. And for those that have got boilers in bedrooms, carbon monoxide detector. Because it's when they're sleeping, they're spending the most time in there, it could become dangerous. Beware of changes of use. This one's quite an interesting one. Changes of use is if you, um, you might have double glazing installed and that might affect the ventilation and the flues of the property. Um, you might split one room into two so that you've took one large room and you've turned it into two. It's changing the um, combustion of the property and therefore may well need another gas safety certificate. So just bear that in mind. Now the penalties for this is for non-compliance of gas safety regulations is £5,000 or six months in jail. So as you can see, it is a criminal offence. It is very important. And remember, proof of service. So make sure you're able to document and prove that you have given the certificate to the tenant. Simply carrying out the certificate is not enough.